Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the Echo of the Bible program. Today, we embark on a profound exploration of one of the most enigmatic mysteries of the 20th century, the third secret of Fatima. This sacred message, concealed for decades, was finally revealed, having been pinned by Sister Lucia, the last living visionary of the Fatima apparitions. What truths lie within this message? Why was it kept hidden for so long? Join us as we delve into a story filled with faith, mystery, and divine revelation that may forever alter our understanding of the world. The significance of the Fatima apparitions, especially in the context of the end times, has ignited a resurgence of interest in recent years. Will we be deceived in these final days? In 1917, three shepherd children in Portugal, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco, received a series of visions from the Virgin Mary. These visions revealed prophecies that have since sent shockwaves through the world. Two of these prophecies have already come to pass, leading many to wonder about the third, which speaks of a global catastrophe. As we approach the year 2024, speculation grows. Will this prophecy be fulfilled? The three Fatima prophecies, revealed during the Marian apparitions that began on May 13, 1917, are a series of apocalyptic predictions. The Virgin Mary appeared to the children six times between May and October of that year, entrusting them with three secrets on July 13, 1917. The first two secrets were disclosed in 1941 at the request of Bishop Jose Alves Correa de Silva, but the third remained sealed until 1960, as instructed by Sister Lucia. The first prophecy revealed the horrifying reality of hell. Sister Lucia described how the Virgin Mary showed the children a terrifying vision of souls suffering in hell, a vision so unbearable that it instilled in them a deep and abiding faith in Mary's promise to lead her faithful to Christ. This vision aligns with the biblical teachings on hell, as described in Revelation 20 verse 15. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. The second prophecy was more predictive in nature. It foresaw the end of World War I and warned of a second, even more devastating war if humanity did not repent. The Virgin Mary also called for the consecration of Russia to her immaculate heart to prevent further suffering. This prophecy echoes the biblical call for repentance to avoid disaster, as seen in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. However, the third prophecy was so dire that Sister Lucia hesitated to reveal it. It was not until she fell seriously ill in 1943 that she was ordered by Bishop Silva to write it down, preserving it in a sealed envelope to be opened in 1960. When finally revealed by Pope John Paul II in 2000, it was said to concern the persecution of Christians in the 20th century, culminating in the attempted assassination of the Pope in 1981. Yet, some believe that the prophecy has not been fully disclosed, that there is more to the message, perhaps a warning of a future event. The apocalyptic imagery in this prophecy resonates with the Bible's warnings of end times tribulations, as seen in Matthew 24 verse 21. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. As we reflect on the third secret of Fatima, it is essential to consider its implications for our time. The vision speaks of a great war, darkness covering the earth for 72 hours, and a massive earthquake. Events that echo the apocalyptic visions in Revelation 6 verses 12 to 14. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to earth. These events are a stark reminder of the urgency of repentance and return to God. The Virgin Mary's warnings are a call to prayer, penance, and conversion, echoing the message of 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 2. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. In these uncertain times, we must remain vigilant and faithful, preparing our hearts for whatever may come. The connection between the Fatima apparitions and other Marian visions, such as those in Akita, Japan, 
highlights the global nature of these divine messages. Akita's message, recognized by Cardinal Ratzinger, then Prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, bears striking similarities to the warnings of Fatima, further emphasizing the urgency of the Virgin Mary's call to conversion. Sister Lucia continued to receive private visions throughout her life. In the mid-1930s, at the encouragement of the Bishop of Lyria, she wrote her memoirs, revealing more details about the apparitions. It was in her third memoir, written in 1941, that she began to describe the content of the prophecies in detail. The first revelation, as we discussed, concerns the terrifying vision of hell. The second prophecy predicted the end of World War I and warned of World War II under Pope Pius XII if humanity did not repent. The third prophecy, often considered the most enigmatic and alarming, was kept secret for many years. Sister Lucia decided not to disclose it in her memoirs from August 1941. However, in 1943, after falling seriously ill, she was urged by Bishop Silva to write down the vision to ensure its preservation in case of her death. Despite her illness, Sister Lucia hesitated because the Virgin Mary had instructed her not to reveal the vision. She faced a profound dilemma, whether to obey the Virgin Mary's command or the direct order of her bishop. In mid-October 1943, Bishop Silva sent a letter with a direct order for her to write down the prophecy. Sister Lucia continued to struggle with this decision until early January 1944, when, according to her, the Virgin Mary appeared to her and instructed her to write down what had been revealed but not to interpret its meaning. The third part of the vision was finally written down in January 1944 and sealed in an envelope that was handed over to Bishop Silva. The envelope remained sealed until 1957, when it was sent to Rome. Canon Gamba, an advisor to the Bishop of Lyria, stated that the bishop refused to open the sealed envelope. Sister Lucia insisted that the envelope be opened and disclosed to the world upon her death, or in 1970, whichever came first. However, it was not until May 13, 2000, 83 years after the first apparition of the Virgin Mary in Covida Iria and 19 years after the attempted assassination of Pope John Paul II, that the content of the third vision was publicly announced. Cardinal Angelo Sodano suggested that the revelation concerned the persecution of Christians in the 20th century, culminating in the failed assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II on May 13, 1981, the 64th anniversary of the first apparition in Fatima. However, some Catholics question the claim that the prophecy has been fully fulfilled. According to the Vatican, the text of the third prophecy was published on June 26, 2000. The Catholic Church allowed the final part of the message that the Virgin Mary gave to the three children in Fatima, Portugal, in 1917, to be disclosed at that time. The first pope to whom Sister Lucia revealed the message was Pope Pius XII. After reading the text, he decided to seal it and keep it secret, not disclosing it to the public. Subsequently, Pope John XEI also read the message and, like his predecessor, chose not to reveal it to the world, realizing that it could cause panic and fear among the people. It was not until Pope John Paul II allowed the message to be revealed, aiming not to cause panic but to raise awareness of this important communication so that people could prepare themselves. According to the message, the Virgin Mary instructed Sister Lucia to convey directly to the world what was to happen between 1950 and 2000. The vision revealed that people would construct deadly weapons capable of destroying the world in minutes, and that half of humanity would perish. A war against Rome would begin, and there would be conflicts among religious orders. God would allow all natural phenomena — smoke, hail, cold, water, fire, floods, earthquakes, winds, and bad weather, to slowly destroy the planet. These events were to occur before the year 2000. Those who did not believe would be given one last chance by the Virgin Mary. Those devoid of love for others, and who did not love their neighbor as Jesus loved everyone would not survive. They would wish for death, and the number of victims would be unimaginable. God would punish harshly those who did not believe in him, who rejected him, disregarded him, and did not make time for him. This was a clear call to return to Jesus Christ. Although God helps the world, 
those who do not repent will be destroyed. Father Augustine, who resides in Fatima, said that Pope Paul VI allowed him to visit Sister Lucia, who was a cloistered nun and could not leave the convent or receive visitors. Father Augustine mentioned that Sister Lucia was very troubled when she received him. She told him that the Virgin Mary was very sad because few people were interested in her message from 1917. Although the righteous were walking the narrow path, evildoers were following the broad road leading to destruction. Sister Lucia was convinced that punishment would come soon, and many souls would perish, and many nations would disappear from the face of the earth. However, in the face of these tragedies, if people reflect, pray, and practice their faith, and if they start doing good deeds, they can save the world. But if people continue on their evil path, the world will be doomed to eternal destruction. It is time for everyone to share the message of Our Lady with their families, friends, and the entire world. The third prophecy is expected to be fulfilled between 2024 and 2025. To prepare for the upcoming events, people are advised to pray, do penance, and make sacrifices. It seems the world is in the last minutes of the last day, and disasters are near. As a result, many who were distant from the church will return to the embrace of the Church of Jesus Christ. People are naturally curious, which is why the part of the revelation that garnered the most attention concerned the assassination attempt on the great bishop in white. The prophecy spoke of a bishop in white who would be killed by bullets and arrows. The failed assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II, who survived, led some to claim that this event could not be the prophecy since the Pope did not die during the attack, whereas the bishop in the vision actually dies. Therefore, some believe that the assassination attempt on the Pope is a prophecy of a future event. However, when the text of the third vision was published, Cardinal Ratzinger, one of the key figures alongside Pope Benedict XVI, added an explanatory note. He wrote that the prophecy might be disappointing as it does not reveal the future. Instead, the vision aims to mobilize efforts to bring about change in the right direction. Therefore, fatalistic interpretations of the prophecy should be rejected, such as the belief that the would-be assassin on May 13, 1981, was merely an instrument of the divine plan and could not act of his own free will. The vision warns of dangers and provides a way to protect ourselves from them. Despite this, the revelation did little to quell the enthusiasm surrounding the third vision. In the final part of the vision, it is revealed that a great war will break out, destroying everything. Darkness will fall over the world for 72 hours. During these three days, one-third of humanity that survives the darkness will enter a new era composed of good people. On a cold night, ten minutes before midnight, a massive earthquake will shake the earth for eight hours. This will be the third sign that God rules the world. The righteous and those who spread the faith should not fear the message of Our Lady of Fatima. It is worth noting that the Fatima vision is unique, although there are other related visions. The connection between Fatima and the apparitions of Akita is due to Cardinal Ratzinger's swift reaction to the Akita prophecy. Bishop Ito speculated that the Cardinal, who was then the custodian of the third vision of Fatima, recognize the similarity between the message of Akita and that of Fatima, whose authenticity was undoubtedly confirmed. This recognition led him to approve his pastoral message for immediate dissemination among the faithful. To better understand this connection, it is worth noting that the Amsterdam apparitions occurred 28 years after Fatima, and the Akita apparitions happened 28 years after Amsterdam. Adding another 28 years after Akita brings us to the year 2000, the first year of the third millennium. The late Pope John Paul II wrote in his book Crossing the Threshold of Hope that as we approach the third millennium, the prophecies revealed to the shepherd children of Fatima would begin to be fulfilled. Another correlation is the connection between these apparitions, which was revealed by divine guidance. Sister Agnes learned the Fatima prayers from her guardian angel, prayers that were originally given to the children of Fatima. If you found this message insightful, please subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and family. Together, let us spread the word and deepen our understanding of these profound revelations. May God bless you and keep you in His grace.